Hello friends, uh, we are discussing about cancer biology and we have seen uh, what is cancer and what are the properties of cancerous cells and what is uh, the limitations uh, that we have uh, during the research of cancer and how we can uh, look for the different properties of cancer utilizing cell lines and cell cultures. And we have also seen uh, the basis of cancer in this small gist that whatever is happening it is actually the transformation of healthy cell into the cancerous cells, healthy cell into the malignant cell. Now there is something is happening to this healthy cell that will trigger this healthy cell to become the bad cell or the cancerous cell. Now that something which is happening to this healthy cell must be uh, done to its uh, DNA level, right? Because DNA is controlling all the events that are happening inside the cell. So there must be some change in this DNA level. Now this change in this DNA level may be caused by different agents. Okay, agents like viruses. We have seen agents like uh, chemical and physical mutagens. We have seen the effect of UV radiation. We have taken the example of xeroderma pigmentosum to understand that point. Now in this video, we will be talking about the genes that are involved in cancer and how they are playing with themselves to give rise to this disease. Okay, so it's uh, now, now you are going to see that whatever we are talking about, whatever change, whatever thing in the minute level, in the miniature level, it is happening to the genes. Now those genes are responsible for controlling cells normal behavior which is called the homeostasis. Now this thing is really really important to remember to understand before going into the details. Homeostasis means a system's ability to control its environment or its system's ability to, uh, to maintain uh, to maintain its surroundings, to maintain uh, many parameters that it lives living, like uh, temperature or pH, something like that. Now, in this case, cells are there. There must be some homeostasis of its environment, must be a homeostasis inside the cell for growth factors, for the proteins which is promoting the cells to grow, and also the homeostasis for cell growth and death. Now, this cell survivability and cell death this is maintained in the balanced fashion survivability and death maintained in the balanced fashion now this survivability and death of cell when it's get hampered then those cells become immortal and they start to gain many different types of functionalities and then they will become transformed into the cancerous cells okay so it's a race between death and survival so let me write it here like this so survival versus death the race between these two giving rise to this type of cancer cells now for the cell survivability there are few proteins few few proteins and also for cell death proteins are involved because whatever we are seeing literally proteins are doing all these things so these things are involved directly now for the cell survival it means cells growth normal growth and division for cell death, it will kill the cell. So there are a lot of different proteins. For example, we are having uh, proteins like caspase. In case of uh, immune system, we are having perforins, granzymes. All of those things are proteins which will kill the cell. Okay. Now, here, we know that proteins are involved in those two cases. So as we know, the proteins are produced from the signal that is present in gene. So definitely, genes are involved in this process. So the genes that are involved in this process. So let me write here in the protein level for survival for example there are growth factors. So one example is epidermal growth factor. So let's write this. So these are proteins growth factors are there. Also there are uh, tyrosine kinases are there. These things are there. For cell death there are caspase proteins, procaspase proteins. There are perforins. There are granzymes and all those different proteins are there. Now this is the protein level, right? So this is the protein level. Now let us talk about the gene level or DNA level because the protein get the signal from the DNA. Uh, so at the DNA level we are having at the survival point we are having those genes which are helping the cells to grow. So cells growth and proliferating genes are there. So proliferating genes 
are there okay and also uh, with this proliferation of the protein there are two different type of genes one type of gene is there which will produce products that is helping the cell for proliferation and another type of proteins are also there which is help helping the pro, uh, which is producing the proteins which is blocking the cell to become proliferated so cell inside the cell both type of proteins are being made from two different type of genes one type of genes are coding for proteins which are helping in proliferation another type of proteins which are blocking the proliferation so second type of protein let me write it in uh, say blue color so they are called tumor suppressor genes tumor suppressor genes now as the name suggests tumor suppressor genes that means these genes will make proteins those proteins will block the proliferation and rapid growth and division of the cells so they eventually block the tumor production uh, inside our body so that's why they are called tumor repressor or tumor suppressor genes so for the survivability we are we are having two different type of genes one is positive modulator and the one is a negative modulator now in case of cell death we are having apoptotic genes we are having apoptotic genes so the genes which will produce products which will eventually going to kill those cells so we will call them apoptotic genes so apoptotic genes are also there so in the gene level we found three different type of gene that are present one is cell proliferating gene another one is tumor suppressor gene another one is the apoptotic genes and also there are also anti apoptotic genes which will prevent them to become dead so let me write it here again there is also anti apoptotic genes so inside our body both the things for survival and for death two different kinds of genes are there for survival one positive modulator one negative modulator for death one positive modulator one negative modulator now tell me what will happen when a cell is transformed to a cancer cell so let us look at this if this proliferating gene is positively regulated try to understand this point if this proliferating genes is positively regulated and this tumor suppressor gene is not at all regulated so in any of this one of the gene type must be activated at a particular time right because both the function of these genes the set of genes are different totally opposite for example proliferating genes will help in proliferation suppressor genes will block the proliferation so at a single time none of this not both of the genes will be active right so only one type of the gene must be active at a time so suppose in this case proliferating genes are activated suppressor genes are down regulated so cells will start to grow very rapidly now for the cell death so cells are growing rapidly for cell death we are having apoptotic and anti apoptotic genes now if apoptotic genes are active then those cells will be dead those cells can be uh, those cells can be killed right because only the program cell death will kill those cells after few division so it won't lead to cancer it won't lead to so if it is active and along with that this is active it won't lead to cancer no cancer but now consider if this proliferating genes are activated and apoptotic and apoptotic genes are not activated instead anti apoptotic genes are activated okay if the combination just flips proliferating genes are activated so cells are proliferating apoptotic genes are down regulated that means apoptotic genes are not functional fully functional so they lost their functionality as a result of losing their functionality due to some activity of agents like physical or chemical uh, agents or say viral agents now it is down regulated so anti apoptotic genes are up regulated so along with these two facts that proliferating genes are helping the cells to become very very much proliferative then anti apoptotic genes are helping them not to be killed 
by normal programmed cell death. As a result, those cells will become immortal and they will give rise to cancer. So, in this case, if these two are the combination, then they will give rise to cancer. So, this is the combination when we can have cancer. For example, if these proliferating genes are down-regulated in any fragment of time, then tumor suppressor genes will block the production of tumor. So, in, there is no possibility of producing the tumor if tumor suppressor genes are positively regulated. Because these genes will block uh, the proliferation of the cells. Okay, so this is an, a combination approach of two different type of gene sets to control whether a cell will be transformed into a cancer cells or not. Okay, so now let us take our real life examples and let's look here. So the proliferating, so we are having proliferating genes. For this type of genes, we can have different uh, phosphorylating genes. Okay, different genes that can uh, produce, uh, that, that can produce proteins which can phosphorylate. We can have growth factors. Growth regulating genes are also part of this proliferating genes. So growth regulating genes, now this phosphorylating genes like tyrosine kinase, serine kinase, kinase now epidermal growth factor platelet derived growth factor synthesis gene so it is called the gene sis or cis so let let me write the examples for the proliferating genes so for the proliferating genes the examples are epidermal growth factor producing gene so the gene the name of the gene is cis here so this cis gene will code for a protein which is called platelet derived growth factor or PDGF. These red things are proteins and these blue things are genes. Okay, so we also have <coughs> proteins that can phosphorylate things. So proteins for tyrosine kinase. Okay, we are having SRC protein. Remember the SRC, sorry, SRC gene. So we are having these genes among the part of cell proliferation and cell growth. And we also ha have different transcription factors. Transcription factors like FOS and JUN. So we are having FOS and JUN. So, this this, so these are different things. These are transcription factors. This, is, this one is a phosphorylating agent and this one is a growth factor regulating part. So growth factor regulating genes growth factor receptor produce uh, protein producing genes then this phosphorylating uh, phosphorylation or protein, the proteins which are needed for the phosphorylation in the signal transduction cascade so those genes and also the genes which are involved as a transcription factor all of these genes if we modify them they will if we upregulate them they will help the cell to become hyperproliferative the cell will grow and grow and divide very very rapidly and produce tumor on the other hand if we look at the tumor suppressor genes tumor suppressor genes for this tumor suppressor genes we are having some very important name p53 is one of the very important genes of tumor suppressor. We are having P21 as tumor suppressor. So these genes are acting as tumor suppressor genes. Now these tumor suppressor genes will block the proliferation of cell by activating many different type of proteins. Now these genes are actually master genes. They are producing proteins. So P53 will produce a protein called P53. Now these proteins not only itself directly interact with the system, but itself they can activate many different type of proteins that are going to block the proliferation of the cell. That is the importance of this protein. So they are the master genes. They will produce the master protein, which master proteins will regulate many different type of proteins and the third kind is the apoptotic genes apoptotic genes in the apoptotic genes we are having the example bcl2 bcl2 is an example of the apoptotic gene okay 
I'll write it here in the small. So BCL2. Okay. Okay. Now this gene will produce a product. That product again master protein product, which will in turn activate some other type of proteins, which will again go and help the cell to be killed via the apoptosis pathway. Okay. So these three different types of genes are the most important genetic basis of the cancer. So remember, for a cancer to set, we must have upregulated the proliferation genes and we must downregulate the tumor suppressor genes and we also downregulate the apoptotic genes. So downregulation of these two types of genes, upregulation of these proliferative genes will help us to establish cancer, cancer in, uh, inside or will help us to transform the healthy cell into the cancerous cells because as the tumor suppressor genes are suppressed so suppression of tumor suppressor genes will lead to the generation of tumor okay so it's a race between survival and death and we can see the involvement of genes in this particular path okay now i have also talked before about the oncogenes and proto oncogene concept but uh, let us again recapitulate this because we are discussing about genes which are involved in cancer. So inside the normal cell, what we are having? We are having healthy cells, we are having healthy genes. Now the genes which are associated with this proliferation or growth and development uh, control of the cell and also tumor suppressor region of the cell, those genes that are present in the healthy cell in general time, in normal situation, those genes are called proto-oncogene because those genes are having a tendency to be modified into something else which can give rise to products that can transform the healthy cell into the cancerous cells. Remember? So, those genes that are present inside the healthy cell but that can be converted into uh, 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 something, uh, some other type of gene which can produce product that can uh, be malicious for the cell to convert it into the cancerous cell, those genes are called proto-oncogenes. So in previous times, this gene is not dangerous. So this is, suppose this is a DNA and here is our gene, red color, uh, say or say, okay, black color. So here is our gene, okay, so it's a DNA of healthy cell. Okay, normal DNA of healthy cell, this is our gene, say G1. Now, due to some modifications, this gene is now transformed. It is modified in such a way that it becomes G1 prime, for example. Now, due to this, any kind of something modification, now this gene will produce, in the earlier time, for example, in, when it is in the healthy cell, this gene produces a product a product, that product is for example a growth factor which controls the growth or regulate the growth of a cell, regulate the proliferation of a cell. But now due to some change, for example due to some presence of some agents, I am just writing it agents, many type of agents could be there, chemical agents, physical agents or say a viral agents must be there. So these agents will convert this uh, normal gene into some type of malicious genes. Now this gene will produce product which is no longer regulating the growth of the cell, which is no longer able to function properly to regulate the proliferation of the cell. As a result, the cell proliferation will start to have in thrived amount because this suppose this is this encodes the protein which hold the control of the cell proliferation. So now as the protein is uh, malfunctioning, so the regulation and the growth of the cell is not halted, it is growing very much rapidly, proliferatively, then as a result, it will produce the product which is not functioning. So the cell is growing proliferatively and uh, it is striving in numbers, so as a result, it will cause the cells, it will make those cells into something else, a bad type of cells and that will produce the cancer here. Okay, so here is this will lead to the production of, again the product is produced, this is a growth factor, but this growth factor is non-functional. So as a result of this non-functional product, this won't work 
and the cell will be converted, the healthy cell will be converted to the cancerous cells. So the first gene that was present in the healthy cell and producing the normal protein is called the proto-oncogene or cellular oncogene because this is much more vulnerable to produce cancerous products so that's why you call them proto-oncogene or cellular oncogene. So it is called proto-oncogene or cellular oncogene or C-oncogene. But after the modification, when it gets produced, it, is, it will be called an oncogene. Now this gene will produce the product which will modify uh, the, the, the type of cell that we had. So this, this is called the oncogene then. So in previous case, it was proto-oncogene, but now it is modified, it produces a malicious product, now it will be called an oncogene. This is the difference between a proto-oncogene and oncogene. Now we have seen that in viruses, we are having these oncogenes. So there are oncogenes inside viruses that can produce malicious protein products. When they inject those products in, into the host cell, then the host cell will behave like the, those bad cells or the cancerous cells. Now we can find that the oncogenes that are present in the virus and the oncogenes and the proto-oncogenes that we find in the healthy cell resembles a very very similar regions. So the conservity between the nucleotide sequences of both the type of uh, proto-oncogenes of uh, the healthy cell and also the oncogene of viral, uh, viral cell is remarkably similar or remarkably similar. Okay, because here suppose so what kind of uh, inference that we can draw from this concept. So we are having virus. In the virus we are having oncogene. They are called the viral oncogene or V-oncogene. And we are having proto-oncogene inside the healthy cell. We call them also cellular oncogene or C-oncogene. And we have seen that both the type of oncogenes, V-oncogenes of virus and C-oncogenes of healthy cell, both of them shared very, very much uh, similar um, amount in the nucleotide. So they, they have shared a uh, conserved domain onto their gene, gene, gene and also in the proteins. Okay, this conservedness between this C oncogene and V oncogene is telling us that that virus is getting those genes from these healthy cells, right? Because virus usually infect our body and then when they, uh, they chop our DNA and pack them in, into themselves and they just come out and go away. Now, in, during this process, Sometimes when during packaging, they get some of this C oncogene from the cell and the C oncogene is modified and be inserted into the viral genome and then it, they become the V oncogene. This could be an explanation for getting the remarkable similarity between the V oncogene and C oncogene. Okay, so it's a huge active area of research nowadays that we can find that those oncogenes uh, present in virus can be a part of our cell. So, previous case it was in our genome, then virus get it. Okay, and then again, when those virus is coming to us and in injecting their DNA onto our host DNA, then again those genes are coming and duplication of the gene will disrupt the product formation and again it will lead to the cancer generation. Okay, so it's a circular process and it is a positive feedback loop that is going on and on and on. So, it is really, really dangerous. It is really dangerous. That means the feedback loop I am talking about is something like that. I don't have any place to draw, but let us uh, consider a small region. So we are having this our host cell. This is a viral cell. So this virus cell, when it infects, this is our host cell DNA. And onto this DNA, suppose there is a small region. Say this is a region of our uh, gene C oncogene. So this is C oncogene. Now, when this is packed onto the virus, the viral will catch, the virus will catch few stretch of this gene here for example this and then again this virus when it infect us again so it gets so viral gain this part of C oncogene from this so then it will be this oncogene is converted this, this red region again is that C oncogene it will be inserted into the viral genome sometimes ago during the evolution then virus is evolving uh, we are evolving and again when it is in the, during the time course it is infecting us and again they are providing this to us so it will produce cancer to us so it produces cancers okay so this is a feedback loop that is going on it is positively regulation throughout the going on because virus is infecting us and we are donating them those proto, those proto oncogenes or the cellular oncogenes okay 
So we have seen that what are the importance of different type of genes that we are talking about. Cis, Sark, uh, Fos, June, these are different type of genes. There are, uh, and also there are KRAS genes, uh, NRAS genes. Also I have forgot to mention KRAS is also a type of gene there. NRAS is also a type of gene uh, which is regulating the cell growth and proliferation. Now upregulation of these genes will lead to the massive growth of the cells and produce production of tumors. There are also cells which in the normal time block the tumor formation like P53, P21. These are the cells. But these cells, uh, this P53, P21, they are downregulated in cancer cells. Now, why they are downregulated? Because if they are upregulated, they will block the production of the cells and proliferation of the cell and block the tumor production. That's why they are called the tumor suppressor genes. Okay, so the downregulation of them and the upregulation of the proliferation, proliferative genes will eventually uh, make uh, or convert the healthy cell into the cancerous cell. So, and also we are having apoptotic genes like BCL2. Now, these apoptotic genes will produce, these are master proteins. Those master proteins will regulate and produce some proteins which will eventually going to kill the cell, infected cell, cancerous cell, uh, or normal cell, for example, due to the course of cellular death, which is called the programmed cell death or apoptosis. Now, this regulation of the different genes, remember, whenever we are talking about regulation of genes, that means we are talking about regulation of the gene expression. Because if there is a gene sitting in our body, if it is not expressed, we don't need to body bother about those things. Each of our cell is having all the different type of genes because remember this is a fine concept and I haven't find most of the students know this concept. They often uh, just don't know this con concept is that we are having different type of cell. We are having million cells in our body. So the cell of our head, uh, of our hair, from the cell of our hair to the cell of our kidney, then the cell of our uh, heart, then the cell of our neuron, uh, cell of our uh, nervous system, which is neuron. So all of these cells that are present in different regions of our body, which is producing different type of organs, different type of system, different type of tissues. Now these cells, all of these cells are having same number of chromosome. We know that. And exactly same type of chromosome same number of chromosome so all of the cells are having all the genes inside our body for example say the cell of our liver is having the gene which code for production of red blood cell or the cell of our heart is also having that gene which codes for the production of neurotransmitter acetylcholine but they never express those products because they won't require them all of the cell is having the capability of producing things, but the expression is not there. So only the liver cells will express those type of proteins which are required for this liver to function like a giant or, uh, organ to help in the digestion, right? Metabolism. On the other hand, uh, the cells uh, of our nervous system only will produce those kind of proteins which is helping in the neurotransmission inside our body not the type of any enzymes that is helping in our metabolism. So the expression of those genes which are producing those metabolism, uh, enzymes for metabolism inside the nervous system cells are blocked. And the expression of the neurotransmitter production gene is always on. This is a fine concept you must understand as a biologist. Now, what will happen for these different genes? So these genes are present in all the cells, in normal cells, healthy cells in cancer cells. Now what will happen? The expression of the proteins from this, the expression of these genes into protein will vary. So when a cell is modified to the cancerous cells, then this proliferating factor, proliferating genes and tumor suppressor, so these proliferating genes are expressed in higher amount. So the level of gene expression for these growth factors and proliferative factors getting increased. On the other hand, the expression of the tumor suppressor genes and also expression of apoptotic genes are down-regulated. Now, how this expression be regulated? The answer is regulation during the transcription. Remember, eukaryotic transcription, there are transcription factors, polymerase which will come and make binding and all these things. So, in those time, the initiation is blocked. The regulate, that's how they are regulated. So they are having repressor molecules that will sit onto the place of the RNA polymerase binding 
onto the place of the DNA. And that will block the synthesis of these protein products during those transformation. And on the other hand, it will upregulate the expression of these genes that that's why they are becoming proliferative. Okay, so the regulation of the transcription can happen in two different ways. One is the regulation to bind, uh, regulation of binding those polymers to the DNA sequence. And second thing is the accessibility of the DNA sequence. Now in eukaryotic system, the DNA that we are seeing, it is coiled, tightly packaged and wrapped around histone proteins, right? It is tightly packed into histones and protein, uh, making those uh, loops and then it will be compacted and making chromosomes. Now, for the transcription, we must open those DNAs from these histones. Then we can get the DNA sequence, then you can melt it and start transcription. So there are proteins which are called repressors, which will block those DNAs to be opened from the histone. And there are proteins which are called activators. When they go and phosphorylate the histone tails, it will make the DNA available. So for these purposes, we will block the activators and activate the repressors. So repressors are in full force activity. So repressors will block the opening of DNA from the histone. So the DNA availability for the those uh, for, for of these genes will be down regulated in case of this cancerous cells. This is how you can think about the problems. So now it's time for organize everything that you have learned. Transcription. Now you know we have studied eukaryotic transcription. You can go uh, and find a video in my YouTube channel about the eukaryotic transcription. So go and watch it. Then come back and then you can understand what I am telling you. So everything that is happening are linked with each other. And cancer is something, remember I have told you before, that cancer is not being caused by any single, single thing. There are multiple reasons which are coming and finally end up in cancer. Okay, so I hope this video gives you a brief idea of how genes are involved in cancer. And I hope it is helping you. Thank you.